Hi, and welcome to the Prophetic Podcast. I'm Kay Nash. If you're new here, we are in season one. Um, and this season, we're calling the season of the deep. Now, today, we're going to be talking about birthing. And for those of you who follow this podcast, you know that I was originally going to be talking about not belonging, but I felt the Lord kind of change it up and tell me to talk about birthing because I kind of feel that's something on many people's hearts right now is how to birth your promise, thoughts about birthing your promise, how it feels while you're waiting for it to birth. And we're going to kind of talk about that because let's be real. We all want to birth our promise. No one wants to have a promise that never births. And so we're going to talk about birthing today. So if that you come on in join me Um, we're gonna have a good time Jesus Mm. now I think we talk a lot in the church about dreams of God but we often don't talk about the process of getting those dreams to come to pass you know if you've had a baby or your wife has had a baby or you've had a friend that's had a baby you would know that birthing is messy birthing is often messy now there is times where things just happen God just does a miracle and we see that happen but sometimes birthing is a messy process you know you got doctors running around nurses running around you know when I gave birth to my son I was like there's like 11 people in here just running around doing stuff it was a messy process and I often don't think we realize how messy the process really is. And, you know, I feel the Lord dropping this in my spirit right now. You know, it was a messy process for David to become king. There was many wars that David had to fight. There was people that were against David. It was a long, drawn out process for him to become king. But God was taking him through a strategic process in order for him to develop the character and skills he would need to be the king of Israel for 40 years. Jesus. Now, you know, I want to talk about how this relates to you, okay? In this prophetic culture, there is a lot of prophetic words that are given. Obviously, some are accurate and obviously some are not accurate. Um... And so, but if you have gotten a prophetic word from someone, whether it's from a prophet, your pastor, um, you know, some evangelist full in the prophetic to apostle, or maybe you just got a personal prophetic word while you were in prayer with the Lord. Maybe you saw a vision drop. Maybe you had a dream. Um, however it manifested, you received a word from the Lord about your future And you get on high from that, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, God wants to do this amazing thing with my life. It could be anything. It could be God's going to give you the job you wanted. God's going to give you the man you wanted. God's going to give you the friend you wanted. God's going to give you um, the money you wanted. God's going to give you the breakthrough you needed. Um, God's going to give you the territory. God's going to give you the orphanage you wanted, whatever you are praying for in prayer. And God might show you a vision. This is going to happen or somebody told you it was. And so that happens and you're excited. You're thinking about the vision. You're talking about the vision and you're on a high. And then a week passes and then a year passes and then two years pass And you're like, hmm, was that right, Lord? Three years pass. And you were like, maybe that was the Lord. Um, Four years pass. And you're like, I'm starting to wonder if that was really the Lord Jesus. Now, this can be hard as we're in this transition process from our breakthrough to where we are now. And I often think we kind of have what people think is a microwave prophetic culture where, you know, you think if you, you know, you do something immediately, it's going to happen. And that totally does happen. You know, we pray for people sometimes and they get instantly healed. We pray for people sometimes and it's a process, you know, and so I think we don't talk about the process as much as we should and we give people false hope that things are going to happen immediately. And even if the word was spoken, you know, sometimes God speaks a thing as if it was, but that doesn't mean it is yet. And that, 
I'm going to say that again. Sometimes God speaks a thing as if it was, but that doesn't mean it is yet. And we become confused because God speaks a certain way that sometimes we don't understand. You know, sometimes God will, I'll pray for something and God will say to me, it's done. And I'm like, whoo, it's done. But then two months pass and the thing still hasn't happened. But to him in the spirit, okay, that's done. I'm going to make that come to pass. But he always doesn't tell us the time it's going to come to pass. Sometimes he does. And in that process of waiting, we become frustrated and we start questioning God. You know, there's some people that never question God. But can we be real prophetic people for a second? Can we just be honest for a second? We've all questioned God, okay? We've all been like, you know, maybe this isn't going to come to pass. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. And we don't want to have missed it. And sometimes even the exact opposite thing happens, you know, I felt like the Lord was highlighting to me, um, the story of Joseph, which most of us know, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but I'm going to go into the specific area of the story that you might not always think about. You know, when Joseph has the dream that his brothers are going to bow down to him one day and he's going to be above them and help them and whatever, you know what happens right after that? The exact opposite opposite the exact opposite and um his brothers aren't bowing down to him they're burying him his brothers are burying him jesus um and the interesting thing is they are literally when you talk about imagery in scripture here they're actually standing above him Okay, and so he's in the hole. So he's here. They're up here looking down on him. So they're like, listen, Joseph, your promise is not going to come to pass. In fact, the exact opposite is going to come to pass. Okay, we are above you. You are beneath us. And we see the imagery there of the exact opposite. And what we don't know is how Joseph felt in the hole. You know, when they take him and throw him in that hole before they give him to the slave buyers, um, they really messed with his self-esteem, I'm sure. You know, they really messed with how he felt about that dream, how he felt about himself. He probably felt conflicted and, you know, and I don't think we talk about this enough that sometimes you get a prophetic word and the exact opposite happens. Jesus. And the exact opposite happens. And then he goes through a bunch of hard years. He goes through trials, painful years, being misunderstood. And, you know, I think we can all be in that season of just kind of like, God, you gave me this prophetic word. The opposite has happened. And now not only has the opposite happened, but it's been years. It's been a long time. It's been a long time and I'm tired, Jesus, and I'm weary and I'm weak and I'm trying to hope, but all I see is the years. All I see is the pain. God, I need my breakthrough. I'm trying to trust you, but it hurts. You know, being betray betrayed by people he loved, it hurt. Being in a hole hurt. Being a servant hurt, being in prison hurt, being falsely accused hurt. The emotional pain that Joseph had to overcome in order to become second in command was very painful. Hmm. Birthing is often complicated. And again, just like David's story, we see also in Joseph's story, the complex mystery of how God brought Joseph to second in command. It was a complicated process. Sometimes the process looks like God's judgment. Sometimes the process looks like God hates you. Sometimes the process looks like you're in trouble with God. It looks like you miss God. But that whole thing might be the process. And we pray for promotion. But what often ensues after that is the process. What often comes after that is the process. Hmm. Now we don't like to paint that picture in the church because, you know, that might, that doesn't always preach well. We preach, every door is gonna open. And right now, 
And sometimes that's true. You know, sometimes God's going to open a ton of doors right now. But sometimes we're zealous, but we're not prophetic. We're zealous, but we're not prophetic. And um, we're giving people false hope that things are going to happen immediately. Now, sometimes things are going to happen immediately. We have seen many instant breakthroughs. I've seen the Holy Spirit drop. And sometimes people misinterpret the word. And that's a big problem, too. It's like, you're like, a door is going to open for you. A door opens for them, but it's not the door they wanted to open for them. And so now they're mad. But God never said that specific door. He said a door. And they get mad at you. And really, they just took it too far, you know. We have to be careful in the prophetic with assumption. It's going to get you hurt. Don't assume anything. Take every prophetic word, whether it's corporate or individual, back to the Lord and say, God, what does this mean? First of all, is it true? And second of all, what does it mean for me? Okay. And when is it for Jesus? Mm. Another phrase I heard is birthing often costs more than expected. Birthing is costly. You know, when I got my hospital bill for my son, that was a big hospital bill. Okay. <laughs> this verse in the Bible really puts it into perspective. This is Ecclesiastes 5, 3. For a dream comes through the multitude of business. A dream comes through the multitude of business. Often it takes a lot of things going on to birth your dream. There's a lot of business you have to do. You know, maybe you want to be a millionaire. You're going to have to do a lot of business to become a millionaire. It's often not one thing. It's often multitudes of things, you know. You want to have a big company, it's multitudes of things. A big ministry, it's a multitude of things. You want to be promoted at your company. You got to do all the work to get the promotion at your company. Birthing a dream often is a multitude of processes, Jesus. So what I want to tell you is I just don't want you to beat yourself up, okay? Because I think a lot of you might be doing that and you might not understand why the season you're in, you're in, and sometimes it's to birth a dream. Now, sometimes we are in seasons because we've been disobedient, okay? To deny that would be a lie. I don't want you to beat yourself up in the process because sometimes a dream takes a lot longer to birth than we thought, um, and that's pretty normal, okay? The amount of people I talk to that say, I'm tired, I want my dream to birth now, I don't know why it's not happening, I'm confused, that's a lot of people I talk to. There's things in my life that haven't birthed yet. There's a lot of things that have birthed. You know, there's things I'm still believing for God for that I'm confused why it's taking so long. But because he's birthed other things in my life, and I know it was a complicated process for those things, I often have to remind myself and say, hmm, it's probably a process. I don't like that, but it's probably a process, Jesus. Mm. Now, Another thing I want to talk about is that it's not only activity that births our dreams. It's not only activity that births our dreams. This is something I never hear people talk about really. Sometimes it's crying out to the Lord. Okay, sometimes a dream is birthed by crying out to the Lord. I've had this happen twice in my life in very dramatic ways and very big breakthroughs. It was a really intense crying out to the Lord. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about a specific example in my life where I cried out to the Lord with my entire being and I birthed a promise of mine. And I really came to the end of myself with this. And I'm going to kind of explain what happened. And I'm going to talk about meeting my husband. In November of 2012, I got a prophetic word. And the prophetic word was this. Spring would be abundant love or something like that. Abundant love this spring. And I got this at, in a ministry. I was out of the state. I was in a prophetic room. Some, you know, some of those churches, they have prophetic rooms in them. And I was in one of those prophetic rooms. And, um, and I was like, spring is abundant love. What does that mean? You know, what does that mean? And I felt like it might mean my man. Okay. <laughs> I felt like it might mean my husband. And um, it was November when I got the word. And so I was like, spring um, is March, April. You know, that's what I was thinking. And so I was like, okay, March, April, spring, got it. Um, so maybe I'm going to meet my man in that time. Well, March passed. I didn't meet anybody. 
April passed. No, man. <laughs> now we're in May and two of my girlfriends, they knew this word because I'd spoken it to them and I think they didn't want me to get discouraged. So they were kind of like, okay, you know, maybe God's talking about birthing your ministry because at the same time, we were having conversations about me kind of birthing my ministry and what that would look like and how it was going to look like. And, you know, it ended up being a lot different than I thought, but we were kind of in the talks about that. And so they were like, maybe God's talking about your ministry and, you know, that's the love. Your love is your ministry. And I felt they were trying to make me not get disappointed if it didn't happen. And, you know, they, they had a good heart, I think, in telling me that, but they weren't right. Um, and I, I was like, you know, I appreciate that, but I, you know, I still have gone before the Lord and I still think it's my man. And I, and it was hard to say that and believe that, but I, I still really felt that in my gut, you know, sometimes you, there's a knowing, but there's no seeing. Okay. There's a knowing, but there's no seeing. And I was like, man, okay. So then it was May and spring was going to come to an end next month in June. And I didn't, I didn't, no one was dating me in May. I wasn't dating anyone. Um, no one asked me on a date in May and it was quiet. You know, there was lots of activity spiritually. Like I was birthing my ministry, you know, I birthed my ministry May 25th and stuff. And so, you know, there's people there and things like that. And um, I was like, okay, you know, I'm not even dating anyone. And, you know, for those of you that don't know, the end of June is spring. It's kind of like, I think different years, it might be a little different, but it's like in the 20s of June um, that week. And so that particular year, there was like three or so days left of spring, technically in June. And so I'm like, man, like I need this word to come to pass. I need it to be my husband. I think it was like three or four days before the last day of spring, technically. And I just went before the Lord for three days straight. And I cried and I cried and I cried before the Lord and I didn't do this kind of prayer. I want you to listen to me for all of you trying to break through something big like a husband or a house or, you know, a big financial break. It's something, something big. Okay. We're not talking about something small. I'm talking about big breakthroughs here. You cannot do this. You cannot go into the prayer and be prayer closet and say, well, God, I really like this and walk out. Sometimes God will do that. But if you want something big, you need to cry before the Lord, okay? You need to tell him everything you're feeling. Get your raw emotions out. Lay flat, okay? I talked to my members about that last month. Lay flat. Lay prostrate before the Lord. God, this is what I want. I need it. This is why. And I just was honest with the Lord. I'm lonely. I am sick of being alone. I am doing ministry by myself. I was doing, you know, for about two years before I birthed my ministry officially, I was doing ministry by myself. I was praying for healing. I was prophesying all sorts of stuff. I wasn't a deliverance ministry in the beginning, but those two I was doing. And, um, and it was hard. It was hard to navigate as a woman. Um, it was exhausting that you come home, you know, you serve everybody, you come home to an empty house. Like it was a little tiresome emotionally to do it by yourself. And um, I needed a husband. And I had gone through lots of failed relationships. Um, and I was not really happy, you know, and I just couldn't understand what God was doing. Most of my close girlfriends were getting married. I was going to, you know, lots of bridal showers and things, and I just couldn't understand what was happening with me specifically. Um, and so I cried out to the Lord for three days straight, just bawling my eyes out, please, Lord, please, you know. And I'm pretty sure it was the last day or the day before the last day, I was right there at that time that I had um, a friend of mine, he had been harassing me to go to this revival meeting that he was having at his church and I didn't really wanna go, um, so I kept avoiding him. Um, and finally, I was like, whatever, I'm gonna go to this revival meeting. And I went there and I was like, oh my gosh, I do not wanna be here. Like their theology just like wasn't lining up with what I believed and I didn't really feel like the spirit was flowing and stuff. And I was just like, I got to get out of here. It kind of felt like, I don't know, just like cultish or it. And I was like, I got to get out of here, but I don't like, don't know how to get out of here. 
And I text Ryan. Now I already knew Ryan and I met him the day I was like launching out into ministry through a mutual friend of ours. And we were kind of all in the same prophetic friend group. And um, I, I messaged Ryan and I don't know why I did this. I was just like, hey, I'm stuck in this situation. I, I need to get out of this. Like, can you just kind of have something for us to do so I can kind of say and you know, kind of say, oh, I have something else I have to do. I need to go, you know? And so Ryan was like, yeah, sure. Like, let's go get tacos. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I was like, hey, listen, like, I really need to go. I appreciate you inviting me here, but I have another obligation I have to get to. So thanks, you know? (laughs) And I, so it was like kind of the, I probably wasn't the most godly thing to do, but I just needed to get out of there. And so I left And I went and saw Ryan to go get tacos. And I was like, thanks, like, for getting me out of this situation. Like, oh my goodness, you know. And he's like, no, it's fine. I don't know why I chose Ryan. I could have texted someone else. I just, for some reason, did. I don't know why. Um, I think I felt safe with him. Like, he was, we kind of had, like, I don't know, maybe, like, five or six of us that, like, always hung out together. And it was just kind of, like, fine, you know. Um, but I don't know. So anyway, I text him, we eat tacos. I'm relieved. Um, somehow we start talking about relationships and I was like, yeah, da 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 da, something about like, you know, when I get married, I always want to be with my husband. I know it sounds like super clingy saying it out loud now. Like, I don't want my husband to be all the, gone all the time traveling without me. And it's kind of ironic now because now I travel fun. (laughs) And I was just like, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Like, I just, I'm going to stop talking about it. Like, and he was like, no, actually, like, let's just talk about it. And I was like, what like and so we just started talking about like what we wanted in marriage what we didn't want and um what we wanted in relationships we didn't want relationships um after we had tacos we went on a walk and around the lake and we just were chatting and I started to realize I think I want a date <laughs> like and, uh, it was like an unplanned date but we ended up like walking around this lake and talking and kind of sharing our emotions and our hearts and um and so Ryan took me back home and I was like I just confronted him now listen ladies don't do this this is like toxic behavior okay I'm just gonna be real toxic behavior here but I was just like listen, I have a ministry. I'm like in this moment, I'm completely forgetting about the abundant love thing. I like, I completely wasn't thinking that I was talking completely out of brokenness here. I was like, listen, I have a ministry. I can't just go around dating people. Like I need to know what your intent is. I can't be hanging out with a guy late at night, going for walks and stuff. Like this is not appropriate. I need to know that you're actually trying to like date me, you know, and like you want to marry me, like, and just da da da. And I just like throw a card, like a big card on the table. And Ryan's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I have not asked the Lord if I'm supposed to marry you. Like he has not given me that green light. I cannot say yes or no to that. Like this is like, you know, And I was like, well, listen, you don't need to know if you're supposed to marry me, but you do need to ask the Lord if you're allowed to ask me on a proper date because I'm not doing this with guys. Like, I am not going on a fake date, okay? Like, I'm not doing it. And uh, and, uh, he's like, okay, I'm going to go ask the Lord if we're supposed to go on a date. And he does, you know, and um, geez, I feel the Holy Ghost. And uh, so he asked me on a date and he felt like the Lord said it's okay and we, uh, yeah, we went on our first date and that was it. Like we were pretty much inseparable after that. There was many tests that we had to go through in order to get married, but yeah, that was it. Um, and here we are, you know, we've been, um, married in September nine years and we've been a couple for over 10 years. And so, yeah, but it was right at that last moment of spring. It was right when I felt like, I don't know if this is going to happen. And I honestly almost ruined it too with my big mouth. And, uh, you know, I think being a public figure and having a ministry and stuff, you have to be very cautious about just dating anybody because people are going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, blah, blah, blah. You have to like, kind of be intentional about things, I think. Um, And so for those of you single people who have your own ministry, really, you know, think about it. Don't just run around dating everybody. It's not going to look good for you. Um, 
but anyway, I, you know, I was really broken in that time. And, um, to, which is why I said what I said, you know, I had almost been married four or five times before Ryan, four or five times, um, to the point with them where we were talking about married, talking about, you know, um, getting engaged. One went so far as he was getting my, he had my ring size. He was about to pick out my engagement ring. Another had given me a promise ring. You know, I had gone through several meeting of the parents and stuff. It was just like, I, I came to these moments of almost, almost, almost four or five times before Ryan and you know, it was just devastating. It was absolutely devastating, which is why I made the comment I did because I was just done with it. I'm like, I'm not playing games anymore. Like I'm getting older. Like I want to be able to have a baby, you know, like all this stuff if I wait too long and just all this stuff, I was just broken. But, you know, I just, I want to encourage some of you right now that you feel like things have almost happened and they didn't. And you're, it felt like the prophecy didn't come to pass because it almost happened. Because it almost happened. Let me tell you, God saved me. You know, the first guy was mildly physically abusive, definitely emotionally abusive. All Four of the five did not even believe in the prophetic, so they wouldn't even know what to do with me. I wasn't fully even myself yet. And so I just, I want to encourage you that just because some things almost happened and they didn't happen doesn't mean that's every single time and it can be really hard to step into a prophecy when you feel like this is just gonna be the same as last time and I had to go through a lot of heart healing in the beginning stages of our dating relationship because I would start shaking like I would be like oh my gosh this is gonna be the exact same as before he's gonna leave just like everybody else and da la la and I'm never gonna get married and you know I'm just one big joke almost married never married you know kind of thing and um and I just was I would have to go through you know I had to talk to different girlfriends of mine and just talk to different mentors of mine and just kind of walk through this very slowly, you know, constantly checking in with different prophetic people. Am I in God's will? Is this right? You know, I was doing constant checks because I was like, I don't want this to happen again. And so I just want to encourage you, you know, I felt awful for a long time before that prophecy came to pass, you know, um, it also came to pass in the last minute, you know? (laughs) And so I just want to encourage you, like, don't give up hope you know, um, it, it might be a long road. It might be a road of a lot of that didn't happen. Maybe that wasn't God's will, but it might come in a way you don't expect it in a way you don't think, you know, I didn't even know I was on a date. Like I didn't even know I was on a date. And, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you. I just, um, I just feel the Lord telling me to pray for people. So I'm just going to pray for people. Jesus, Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus right now, God, for anyone who's listening to this, God, that if they feel like they've had an almost breakthrough, but it wasn't full, God, I just pray that a full breakthrough comes to their life, whatever needs to happen, God, and that while they wait, God, you would be so close to them. You know, the Bible says that he is near the brokenhearted, God. Be near them today. Cry if you need to cry. Be honest with the Lord. I've told so many girls that I have mentored this phrase, be honest with the Lord. Be real with the Lord. Don't be falsely okay. Be real, okay? Be real with the Lord. And that's a lot where a lot of your breakthroughs are, you know. If you don't, stop. I'm going to feel this right now. Some of you, stop walking around saying, I'm okay that I'm single when you're not, okay? If you are not okay with it, you are not okay with it. You don't have to be fake with the Lord. You need to tell him how you really feel because you being fake is stopping the breakthrough from happening. You, you know, you could say, God... I'm not okay with this. I want this. You know, you don't have to be fake. God knows how you feel anyway. Don't be fake with the Lord. He knows how you feel anyway. It doesn't mean you need to be complaining, but don't be fake. Jesus, you know? Mm. Hmm. You know, I'll never forget this story that I read in a newspaper in um, Charleston, South Carolina. I was, I was living in South Carolina for a while, and sometimes we'd go to, like, Charleston to, like, do things. It was a really nice area. And um, – I read this newspaper. It was such a cool story. This woman who was 72, 72 for the first time she got married. And I was like, whoa, I can't even believe she would still want to get married. And in the article, she says he was worth the wait. And she said, 
everything else was just an imposter. This is real love. And I'm glad that I waited. And I just remember being like, oh my gosh, like real love, you know, like she was willing to wait for that real love. Even if she was 72, she didn't want the imposters. And, you know, love is worth waiting for. Love is worth waiting for. And, you know, maybe it has nothing to do with relationships for you. You might be married, you know, you might have, you're going to get married soon, whatever, you know, this might not be for relationships for you, but you can still apply these same principles. Maybe it's a book deal, you know, maybe it's a speaking engagement. Maybe it's a better job, a, a better location, you know, the right community, whatever it is that you're waiting on God for, you know. God has that for you. If he's told you he has it for you, you just have to listen to him and follow him. And honestly, you know, the Bible tells us to follow love and don't follow opportunity. Follow the love of God, Jesus. Now I want to go into some keys to birth our promise. Um, one of them is prayer. Um, you know, there's often spiritual things going on that we can't understand. We see that in the book of Daniel, but it's just like Daniel didn't know why, you know, it was taking so long to get his answer to his prayer, but there was spiritual things going on that he didn't understand. And so you can't just hope you have to pray. You can't just hope you have to pray. Okay. You have to go before the Lord and you have to talk to him about things. Number two is you got to get your heart right. Why do you want this? I remember telling the Lord right before my, I got my husband, I just said to him, I was like, God, just give me someone to love. Give me someone to love. And um, so many of you are like, God, give someone to love me, which I don't think it's wrong per se, but we have to get to that place of it's not about you getting love because he is your love. It's you giving love. And so it's like, you know, we live in a culture where everyone has their list of like the 700 things they want in a husband. But, you know, it's like maybe your list is too big. Okay. Some of you, your list is too big, you know. There, yes, there's certain things that are non negotiables. You know, he shouldn't be having affairs. He shouldn't be beating you. He should be full of the Holy Spirit and following him. And uh, yeah, there's certain non-negotiables. I totally get that. But there is some things that maybe you can negotiate on. You want someone with brown hair, maybe a blonde hair person's okay. You know, it's like, you know, some of these things you might have to let go of Jesus because it's about loving Jesus. Number three, do the work. Do the work, okay? Sometimes like we talked before, some dreams come about through processes and birthing, you know, if you want to have a book deal, you have to write a book, you know, if you want to have promotion at work, you got to work really hard. You got, your boss is not going to promote the lazy worker. You can't clock in late, show up whenever you want, do whatever you want, turn in late assignments, ignore what the boss told you to do, talk bad about the boss behind his back, and then want a promotion. Hello, you're not going to get one. Hello? It's like common sense, you know, I'm not going to promote someone in my ministry who's talking about about me, not getting things done, not being attentive to details. Why would I do that? If I can't trust them at this level, why would I give them the next? Okay, you have to be excellent at this level in order to get promoted. Jesus. Now, number four is focus. Okay. It's like you got to focus because sometimes we're chasing too many rabbits. Oh, God, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. Did God tell you to do that? Or you just think you have to do that. Okay. You know, and sometimes you just can be honest in your desperation. Okay. Is another thing too. You know, Hannah was desperate. Hannah was desperate. Okay. And she cried before the Lord and, and this crying before the Lord birthed Samuel. Okay. Some of you don't even know what's inside of you. Some of you, you don't even know what's inside of you. You might have a Samuel inside of you, but you haven't cried out. You haven't worked your process. You haven't gotten focused. There's more in you than you think there is. There's more in you than you think there is. The Holy Ghost lives inside of you and he's moving inside of you. He's flowing inside of you. I want you to take that out of you and birth it into your promise. Jesus, go for the Lord. Move for the Lord. Shake for the Lord. Jesus, Holy Ghost. Become unmovable for the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hmm. All right, you guys. I hope this encouraged you today. I also have a CD about birthing your promises. Um, I go into different stories in the Bible about birthing promises. And it was a sermon I spoke 
probably several years ago, maybe like four years ago or something. It's a really good sermon and I love it. And a lot of people love it too. So make sure you check that out as well on my store tab. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. This was just a little nugget of encouragement for you. You know, don't get discouraged. I've been in long, painful processes. Nobody wants to go through almost married four times. Nobody wants that. You know, it's just like, Nobody wants their dreams to manifest in a long period of time. And we all can grow weary. We all can go weak. But remember, there's more in you than you think there is. There's more for you than you think there is. But you got to work your plan. You got to get your heart right. You got to go before the Lord and cry out. You got to do the things he's telling you because God wants to give it to you. He delights in the prosperity of his servant. He wants you to have good things. He wants to promote you. He wants to do things for you. Don't think because there's a process, there isn't a promise. Just because there's a process doesn't mean there's not a promise, Jesus. Mm. All right, you guys, I love you. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Um, If you're new to the prophetic podcast, I do one of these each month and next month will be in our fourth episode. So make sure you join me on Spotify or YouTube. All right, I love you and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.